Here I am applying the wet paint to the wet paper. And I work this way until I'm satisfied with the background colors. I'm also inserting a photo in here so that you can see what colors I'm trying to duplicate in this, in this photo, in this painting. And um, I'll continue on with the wet into wet. And there will be at a point where the paper will be too dry to accept the wet paint. So I will stop and change. putting in the background trees notice the paint color on the left is warmer and the paint color on the right for the trees is cooler so when it gets toward the light it's warmer and I'm also just adding some more some of the tree shapes in the background Next, on top of these, I'm softening the tops of the, the trees so that it doesn't have a hard edge up there. With a damp brush, I'm lifting out some of the color to bring out a little bit more depth. I'm not worried about the leaf shapes yet. I'm just putting a little bit of the background color that's going to be behind the leaves as I paint in later with the dry brush. And you'll see that in later on in this in this video. Remember when you're putting in branches of trees, um, make sure you skip some spaces because the branches are not going to be straight lines through a tree. They're going to skip through the leaves, skip around other branches, and just make sure that you do that. I'm drawing the shape of the main branch here that's going to carry some of the, the leaves. This is one of the main characters in this scene. so. And I'll be increasing some of the color and notice how I'm skipping through some of the, the leaf shapes. I'll come down and draw in and paint in the rest of the tree, the trunk of the tree. And there was a gray area right there and I thought it'd be a nice time to just use it as a place to put in a negative shape. So I will put the rest of the trunk down to the, to the ground on the right hand side.
loved about this Pinterest photo was the sunlight that was coming down through the trees and the, the pretty orange color that was captured by the light. One other thing that I liked about this painting was, or this photograph, was the dark corners that draws your eye right into the light of the sunlight. So I continue to keep painting on this and, and building up the colors in the corners to emphasize that light shape. color of this painting has changed because I'm painting it now in daylight. Last night it was darker and the colors look different down in my, my studio. And I'll have to make an amendment on that to try to make it better. But right now I'm doing a dry brush technique for the grasses. I don't paint every single grass individually because that's not important. By looking at this you can tell because of the mask underneath it, you can tell that there is textures of grasses underneath. Where light is coming through a branch on a tree, there's going to be some darkness that goes down there because it'll be like a shadow coming through. So that's what I'm doing right now is I'm putting that shadow in. And I've inserted the, the photograph so that you can see what I'm referring to. With a damp brush, I also stroke down through and that's what created the streaks of light.
the watercolor here is the combination of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. This is a light value that I paint in first. Underneath this there was some mask so that I was able to preserve some of the whites. And I increase the values as I uh, make, the, make the watercolor darker and increase the values by adding more ultramarine or burnt sienna, whichever the color needs. But the burnt sienna will gray things down and make it look more natural. Using the sponge, I move my hand in different ways, up, sideways, around, just so that the shape isn't continuously the same. And I'm also increasing the values of the colors of the green to create depth on the tree leaves. The value of the green was made with sap green, burnt sienna, and ultramarine blue.
Notice where I'm painting now, the, there's part of the tree that is a little wider there than it is at the base of the trunk. So in a minute, I'm gonna be correcting that because that base of that tree will never hold up that big piece of tree. So I'm increasing that now and uh, making the tree trunk broader and wider so that it can accommodate that, that thickness that I just pointed to. getting ready to paint the final details of semi-dry paint on dry paper. This is the finished painting. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please like my channel or subscribe. lindayoungwatercolors.com is my website. Thank you.